Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how'd we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute episode 689. In today's episode, Amazon plans to move Prime Day. COVID-19 has spurred the temporary closure of hundreds of stores and furloughs of thousands of retail workers. So one would think, besides logistical setbacks, that e-commerce and its events would be relatively unscathed, right? Well, not so much. One of the biggest yearly online shopping events, Amazon Prime Day, is expected to be pushed back due to the novel coronavirus, according to reports. The shopping extravaganza, typically held in July, will be delayed until at least August. Analysts expect consumer habits to change even in the long term, and we've seen digital sales rise in several categories. And recently, Amazon added 100,000 full and part-time positions in its fulfillment and delivery network in response to the increased demand. If you rewind a little bit to last year, the company had quite a successful Prime Day. Amazon said it sold 175 million items during its 48-hour parade of epic deals. While the e-commerce giant did not reveal the total dollar amount Prime Day brought in, Amazon said it broke records for sales of its own devices, such as the Echo Dot, Fire Tablet, and Fire TV Stick, drawing in participants from 18 countries. The company also said it sold $2 billion with a B in product from small and medium businesses, almost double the figure from the year before. We'll be sure to keep you updated on the event as time continues as we start to get the actual timeline regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. So might not seem like a big deal, but this is like a big shift in e-commerce yeah. for the year, even though- In every way, Amazon- right? Amazon Day is just an excuse to spend money you don't have, but there's a lot of sellers that depend on this event, and Amazon itself obviously rakes in a ton of dough. What we've seen is they use the event just to push their devices because the more devices you get, the more opportunities there are for them to use to sell other stuff. So this is a big deal. Yeah, I. so it's kind of interesting because they, I think non-essential stuff are starting to funnel into warehouses for Amazon slowly. But it's going to be a, you know, it's still going to take forever. So I'm not sure how Prime Day is going to happen without third-party sellers. Yeah. But I I mean, if they slip it to August, that is, you know, May, June, July, it's four months away. I think a lot can happen between now and then. But you're right. They are starting to let some stuff get shipped to the warehouses again. My concern is that now this stuff is starting to hit the warehouse, we're going to have disruptions coming not from the supply chain, but the people who actually operate the supply chain. I know that Smithfield, one of the biggest pork manufacturers in the country, just shut down their operations. So RIP Bacon probably for the next two months. Uh, so I think we're going to see yeah. that we're going to see blips in that part of the supply chain. Not so much that oh it's not there or oh we can't you know we can't repurpose from commercial to residential. It's just oh, the workers are getting sick. We got to shut the place down. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I think everybody's going to have is the reliance on Amazon, not from a consumer perspective, but from distribution perspective, right? Where people are going to rethink their product lines and how they ship and all that. So it's going to, it's definitely going to be a interesting afterwards. Yeah. From an e-commerce perspective, this is definitely something to watch because I think a whole lot of things are going to be changed and reconsidered. Again, this whole thing is, is tragic. I think the economic fallout is going to be something that we haven't experienced. But at the same time, I think this is really going to change how business is done. And I think a lot of things are going to be reconsidered. It's strange when the world pauses, opportunities present themselves. <laughs> I mean, somebody said that the other day, it was like, this is, a, this is a unique opportunity in history. 
the world has paused. You get to stop and think about what you did wrong in life or what you did right in life and how you yep. want to spend the rest of your true. life. <laughs> right? I mean, true. it's crazy. It's, but it's everything, right? It's, it's, everybody had it good, right? And it was easy and, and yeah. it was just people just sold. And it's like, all right, well, it's shut down. Right. It's and everything. Start. Yeah. And everything was what just moving. Fix? Everything was just moving fast and now it's not moving so fast. And now you realize, well, maybe I didn't need that 10 pack of charger cables. Maybe I really just need some spinach right now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or bacon or bacon. Oh God, bacon. I miss bacon. Anyway, so Wayfair who had their own goofy thing called Wayday, they're going to postpone their sales event. Bart, you and I have been watching this, how there's these, now these surges of different things, <laughs> Would we say when podcast last week, bread maker was number one, but we're also seeing things like, you know, sports shirts, equipment and top, all that. Top, yep. Yeah. Sports equipment. Hey, and top, top shirts. <laughs> top, yeah. Just tops, not bottoms because people don't wear bottoms in their video conferences, sports <laughs> equipment, things like that. Then we got into now everyone's baking. So you can't find yeast. It's weird. The supply chain is just going through a weird thing. And now all of a sudden it's like, and again, I, oh God, I hate Facebook, but I go in there just to find out what the heck is going on in my neighborhood. And people talk like, Oh, you can find this. This is where I can get this. This, it's more of a news outlet for me. And the last two days, it's like everybody's like, oh my God, I found antibacterial wipes. And I'm like, yeah, it's just like the olden days, except you have to wear a face mask now. It's like we have stuff again. I mean, stuff stuff is there. Like we try to like not go in the mornings. We actually went shopping yesterday and we try not to go to the morning to let, you know, older folks go and it's easier. And actually mm -hmm. last night we went right after that rain. And it was pretty empty. Like there was 10 people in the store, which is mathing of it is good. Toilet paper is gone, but I actually went in the morning on the, on to CVS and they had a whole full shelf of it. And it yeah. was fine. Yeah. It's, it's still hit or miss, but it's not like it was four weeks ago where people were just, you know, people are freak which, out. Yeah. Which still enrages me. It's like the people waiting in the 100 person line in Costco with a mountain of toilet paper. And then they go and try to return it right. two weeks later. And Costco's like, mm, suck it, buddy. <laughs> you yeah, well, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, there was a, I saw uh, somebody put two pictures together. We're like, hey, look, all the pasta is gone. But look, all the veggies are available. Nobody's yeah, buying you? them. And you're like, what? It makes? that makes no sense. <laughs> Why don't you grab some veggies? <laughs> right. I mean, during this time when you're home, you probably should be eating more veggies than anything else. Yeah. True. That's true. All right. So let's just a couple more points on the Amazon Prime Day. Moving it to August could be problematic because it moves up closer to the holiday shopping days. But who knows what that's going to look like? You know, the jury is still out on what the rest of the year is going to look like in terms of holidays and, and things like that. I mean, obviously, there'll still be the holidays. It's just they're going to look a lot different. And I don't know if people's spending habits will be what they've been in years past. And even if you move it closer to, to Labor Day, it's it's near the back to school season. So people's budgets who are already tight, then they got to start thinking about school uniforms because knock on wood, that's my head, knock on wood, you know, school will be back in session by then. So they're going to take those dollars that they would have spent on their silly devices or whatever and say, oh, I got to buy books. I got to buy shoes. I got to buy all the school clothes. So I don't know. It's 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 very interesting in that one company could just make a, a decision like this and how it ripples out to the rest of the e-commerce industry. So we'll really have to keep an eye on that. Close this one up a little stat time. From March 23rd to 30th, e-commerce marketplaces saw a 14% increase in volume, according to data from Forder Global Merchant Network, and that's from Retail Dive. And Prime Day helped the ubiquitous, famous, amazing Instapot sell $14.8 million worth of product in a single day. That's from Inc.com. Brittany, do you have an Instapot yet? Not yet. I want one, actually. You should buy I've had them. my eye on them. You Maybe them. Uh, on sale. whenever the next Prime Day is. You know what? Yeah. I've seen as cheap as 70 bucks in Walmart. So uh, the usual, that's not the six, bad. The, the six quart ones are usually the cheapest. Yeah, they're, the smaller ones are everywhere. cheapest, and that's what that's all you would need. I'll tell you what, it'll change your life. All right, enough of that. We'll do a separate, <laughs> cooking, a separate cooking show on another day. That's your e-commerce minute <laughs> for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe, or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion, or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs> <laughs>